In this quick study, I'm going to give you seven ways to read the Scriptures. We all need to be reading the Scriptures, and I hope this will give you encouragement to get in your Bible. The first thing you need to do is read the Scriptures with a purpose. In John 5 and verse 39, it says, Search the Scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That's Jesus saying that. He said, search the scriptures. And he said, these are they which testify of me. And when Jesus said this, the New Testament hadn't been written yet. It was Old Testament. And he was saying that they testify of him, showing you that Jesus was in the Old Testament. While you search the scriptures, do it with a specific purpose. Do it with a purpose. For example... While I'm reading right now, I'm trying to get the main thought of each chapter and write it above each chapter. Sometimes I go through and I try to find Jesus on every page and highlight the verse with a red highlighter with a brief description on why it reminds me of Jesus Christ. For example, while you read the scripture, start in Genesis with a certain topic in mind that you want to learn about. Uh, maybe you want to find all the verses about prayer. Keep that topic in mind as you read the entire Bible and search the scriptures for that topic. Underline it with a specific color. And then when you're done reading the Bible, you'll have a really good thought about prayer. A good whole thought about prayer that you found throughout the Bible. If you are searching the scriptures as you read, you will stay more focused and your mind will not drift off into space while you just continue to read not even acknowledging what you're reading. Have you ever had that happen? You're sitting there reading the Bible, and then two chapters later, you're like, what did I just read? Because your mind was drifting off the whole time. If you're reading with a purpose, then you're staying more focused because you're searching the Scriptures. You're looking for something in particular. Now, you don't want to read something into it that ain't there, or don't read the Bible with the purpose of trying to make your certain belief be in there. But I mean, I'm talking about something like going through looking for prayer, going through looking for times that God spoke to a person, things like that. And if you do that, if you read with a purpose, you're going to stay more focused. The next thing, read the word with the proper attitude. Read it with a purpose, read it with the proper attitude. In Exodus 24 and verse 7, it says, And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. So he read the word and then they said, all that the Lord said we will do and be obedient. When you read the scriptures, don't approach it with an attitude of correction. You approach it with the attitude that it's going to correct you. Approach the Bible with the attitude that everything God says is right and what you think is only right if it lines up with the word of God. Amos 3.3 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Can you really say you're walking with God if you don't agree with everything you're reading in the Scriptures? Sometimes we have temptations in our flesh, and the Bible will kick those temptations. The Bible will kick those pet sins. Always take the Word of God and let it have preeminent place over your sin. Use the Word of God as a mirror to fix your sin issues that you have on any given day. In James 1, through 25, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. When you open up the scriptures, it's like you're looking in a mirror. It's telling you everything that's wrong with you. Approach it with the proper attitude, and you'll come out a lot better. So, read the scriptures with purpose. Read the scriptures with the proper attitude. And now, read the scriptures with prayer. Before you open the word, just say a prayer. In Psalm 119, 18, it says, Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Before I read the Bible, I ask the Lord to give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray that God will make me have the right motive for everything I do for him. I pray that he will get the glory in everything and not give me any glory. 
I pray for God to open up His Word for me and give me things that He hasn't even given anyone else. And don't get me wrong, I don't pray this to get a one-up on somebody or something like that or, or to be special. I just ser seriously want the maximum of what I can get out of that reading time. Pray that the Lord will bring all things to your remembrance so that you can make cross-references while you read. Sometimes I'll be reading something and then I'm reminded of another verse. So I search where it's at if I don't know the verse off the top of my head and I search it with e sword or a concordance and I just write that reference down. But as it says in John fourteen twenty six, He's going to bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Uh, pray that God will bring things to your remembrance that you read. So, seven things you can do with the scriptures. The first one, read with a purpose. Read with the proper attitude. Read with prayer. And now next, read with pronunciation. In Proverbs 30 and verse 5, it says, Every word of God is pure. If every word of God is good and profitable, then it would profit you to read the names and places in the Bible that are hard to pronounce. Try your best to pronounce them. Listen to audio Bibles and look up the proper pronunciation so that when you read the names and places, it'll just flow off your tongue easier. You'll read the Bible easier. I don't personally know anyone that can pronounce all the names. Just sound it out and do your best, though. And you know, a lot of them chapters with a bunch of names tucked inside, they got some of the greatest stories. For example, Genesis chapter 5, where you got the generations of Adam and it's naming off a bunch of people. That's an interesting chapter. It's saying a bunch of names, but it's telling you how long those people lived, and they lived to be like 900-something years old. It's cool to see Methuselah in there who lived to be 969. It's cool to see Enoch in there, the top of the rapture of the church, with Enoch being taken out while he's still alive. That's in Genesis chapter 5. If you skipped that chapter because of all the names, you missed out on that story. Go through there. Try to pronounce those names as best as you can. And get an audio Bible or something and try to get something from those guys about how they pronounce them. They may not even be pronouncing them right. Uh, I believe that God doesn't really care if you're pronouncing them right as long as you're giving it your best shot. Just try to learn them. Try to learn the words. Read the scriptures with pronunciation. Try to pronounce every word. Don't just skip it. Next, read the scriptures with a pen and a pad. You can find Jesus Christ saying things like, in Matthew 9, 13, he said, But go ye and learn what that meaneth. He would tell people to go and learn what something means. While you are reading your Bible and you find a word or passage that you don't understand, don't just keep reading, write it down on a piece of paper and figure out what that meaneth. Write it down on a piece of paper, continue with that reading session, and then later on when you do your study time, there you got a bunch of stuff to study. Do your reading. Write down the things you don't understand, like the big words you don't understand, the, the words that we don't necessarily use today that you don't understand. Go back and look, what, look up what they mean. Go ye and learn what that meaneth. Search the word through the scriptures to find the definition the Bible way. You can get the word that you don't understand exactly what it means. Search it throughout the Bible, read it in its context, and you can mostly find out what it means that way. You can also get help from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You can find online commentaries that might help. Just let the scripture give the final say-so. So read with a purpose. Read with the proper attitude. Read with pronunciation. Read with prayer. Read with a pen and a pad. Next, read with people on your mind. Getting knowledge in the scriptures shouldn't be just to make yourself smarter. There are people out there with questions that you need to answer. And in 1 Peter 3.15 it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I don't just need to know things about the Bible. I need to know the Bible. I need to know what every book is about. I need to know the stories. I need to know how to rightly divide the scriptures. I need to know the doctrine and especially salvation. I need to know it inside and out. And as you read the word, remember you will be eventually asked a question about that particular thing that you're reading. 
You'll be surprised about what lost people will ask and even what saved people also will ask when you put yourself out there in that situation. It is a bad testimony when a lost man knows more scripture than a 15-year believer. Somebody's been saved 15 years. Have people on your mind. Mark the verse if you think it might give comfort to someone in a certain situation and remember it. Write the words of God on Facebook so that someone can see it. In Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 1, it says, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. You, you can put the word of God out, out there, and you don't even know that it had an effect until years later. Just cast your bread upon the waters. In Psalm 68 and verse 11, it says, The Lord gave the word, and great was the company of those that published it. Publish the word. Put it out there. Get it out there. My main burden for reading the Bible is learning all that I can so that I can get the saints interested in the scriptures. So read with people on your mind. Next, read with preservation in mind. In Psalm 12, 6 and 7, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in, the furn in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. From this generation forever. Don't forget that God allowed many men to die and suffer shame so that you could have the word of God. Many men died so that you could have freedom to read the words without fear. Many Christians have died for what the word of God says. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.12, All that live godly in Christ Jesus so suffer persecution. Many Christians even today are dying because they choose the word of God over man. And if you realize that not every saint has the privilege of reading the words without fear as you do, then it should make you get overcome with appreciation about how God has preserved the scriptures throughout time, allowing men to suffer and die in pain and agony so that you could have this word of God here today. When you read, read with preservation in mind. You have a 24-7 opportunity to pull out the Word of God and read it. You can read it when you get up. You can read it on your break. You can read it at the doctor's office. You can read it at church. You can read it as your hobby. You can read it before you go to sleep. You can listen to Alexander Scorby while you sleep. don't know if that'll help, but it couldn't hurt. And remember, the things that have happened so that God could preserve His Word for you to have them in a book in your living room with a premium lamb skin, calf skin, goat skin, cowhide, buffalo leather cover, thumb indexed, chapter and verse marked, wide margin, gold gilded, raised hubs, gold stamped, name imprinted, authorized version of the Holy Scriptures. Keep it in mind that people suffered so that you could have that in your living room with 24-7 access to it. Read with preservation in mind. Remember, not everybody's so privileged to have that word of God that you have it. Remember that there's been there's people right now who would love to have the Bible, but they don't have one. Don't just let it collect dust on the shelf. Pick it up and read it. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. Remember, seven ways to read the scriptures with a purpose, with proper attitude, with prayer with pronunciation, with a pen and a pad, with people on your mind, and with preservation in mind.